join us today. We are so excited to have you all here and uh, talk about some old familiar friends, Woodford Reserve, Double Oaked, and Rye. And then as Chris said, we're so excited um, to unveil this new member of the family, Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey. We can make this as brief as you like or as long as you like. And I hope, <laughs> I hope it gets a little bit in lengthy because I think it's a good subject to discuss malt whiskey and especially as we believe Whiff Reserve is going to redefine what malt whiskey is certainly in the United States. So we start every tasting as many of you all have been with us before with our foundation. Everything begins with Whiff Reserve. We used to call it Whiff Reserve Distiller Select. That was our bourbon. Now we have the Distiller Select family which includes rye and our malt and more to come in the future. So this is now Wood Reserve Bourbon, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, as we call it officially. And as you know, its product formulation is based on our five sources of flavor concept. The impact of the grain recipe, the impact of our water, how we ferment, how we distill, and how we mature in our custom crafted barrels from our own brown form and cooperage. Keep that in mind because the only difference between bourbon, rye, and our malt is the grain recipe. The water, the fermentation, distillation, and maturation processes are identical. So when you actually see, nose, and taste the difference between these three products, it's because we changed the grain recipe. Double oaked is a significant change, but that's in the maturation side of the equation. Uh, Woodford Reserve is provable via analysis. As you all have heard us say many times before, it is the most complex bourbon made on a continual, everyday basis. Again, we can prove that scientifically. In terms of organoleptics, we know there are 212 flavors, congeners. Some of these flavors are nose or palate sensitive, but they all combine to give us this very elegant, balanced whiskey. And we're sitting here with all the whiskey, and you don't have any. So everybody, come up, <laughs> come up and grab a glass. So please go, grab a glass. And from Elizabeth here. will take us to a tasting. Distiller Select Bourbon, of course, very balanced and complex. What I love about this product is that you nose it, and it well it covers all areas of flavor. So sometimes you're going to get spice, sometimes you're going to get vanilla or sweet aromatic notes. Other times you'll get more wood character, grain character, or the fruit notes coming through. So it's going to present itself a little differently, but you always know it's Woodford Reserve because it falls into the box of flavor of Woodford. Um, so when we'll, let's just join in nosing this. I mean, and today I'm getting more of the vanilla cinnamon notes coming through, but you all maybe experience it differently. Um, but that's what I love about it, and that's what makes it so playful in cocktails and such a great base spirit for whether you're having it neat or on the rocks. Now go ahead and taste. And what I love about Woodford Reserve is on the finish, think about the nuttiness, the malt character that comes through. Um, it, it just kind of takes that finish and extends it for a really long time. And as Elizabeth mentioned, the malt character of Woodford Reserve, that's something we're proud of across all of our products. Old Forester, Early Times, Coopers, King of Kentucky, and certainly the Woodford Reserve family. Brown Foreman does not use artificial ingredients in our whiskeys, in our process. So all of our grain starch to sugar conversion for fermentation is, is completed through the addition of natural enzymes from our malted barley. So it's natural, it's authentic, and malt does add flavor. So the recipe, as you all well know, of Woodford Reserve and of Old Forester is 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. In our process, that is an act, that's actually a little extra amount of malted barley to make sure that starch to sugar conversion is complete. But again, you taste the rye, you taste the malt influence. And as a consequence, this is not a very corny whiskey. This is not a bourbon with a lot of corn character to it. It's a race going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's wait till the race is over. Oh, sorry, Chris. <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> Core product of our family. It will always be our focus. Those of you who have visited our distillery know it's not a big distillery. We can't just make a lot of everything. So. 
Its core business is to produce our bourbon, which of course makes the production eventually of double oak possible. Those will be our largest volume members of the family. As we get into rye and malt, we can only make those at select periods of the year. So by nature of our production process, they will never be large volume brands. We will not be the number one selling rye. We will not be the number one selling malt whiskey. We can't. What we can be and are, according to the International Wine and Spirits Register, is the number one selling super premium American whiskey of any type in the world. Number one American whiskey at our price position. And it's hard to believe, a little over 21 years ago, we, we scrambled to get 125 cases out the door. And now we're number one. So that will continue to be our focus, is our bourbon whiskey. All right. Bourbon whiskey we'll again. We're going to sample That's another bourbon that we have. This one is near and dear to my heart because this is when I fell in love with bourbon was with Double Oaks. Um, I first experienced it just on the rocks with a little lemon twist, and I, it, was, it just blew me out of the water and um, allowed me to enter the club of drinking bourbon as just somebody else who it didn't have to be in a cocktail, it didn't have to be dressed up, just as is, because it is actually it is spectacular. I call it a gateway bourbon. Um, and this product, so it starts out as Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Bourbon, so same exact liquid. But instead of putting it into a bottle, we take it and we put it into a second barrel. And the second barrel is heavily toasted and lightly charred. So the toasting process is where you get into the real sweetness of the wood. So you're not setting it on fire, you're just simply heating it up. Um, and it gets into the lignin layer, which is where all the vanillin is. So when you get all those buttery notes on the nose, butterscotch, you think of a Werther's original, that's where it's coming from. Then we flash char the barrel for just up to five seconds so that it is still considered a bourbon barrel, so we're caramelizing those wood sugars. And we let it sit in that beautiful barrel for up to 12 months. And this is what the end result is. Comes out in a rich, rich dark brown color, and then the nose on it. So you can never miss, you know, for, confuse which is which um, between the two because the color is so much darker, and then also the nose on it is just absolutely decadent and wonderful. Um, so go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. Cheers. 90.4 proof, just as our original bourbon. So Elizabeth talked about our double oaked barrel. We're very fortunate that we have the Brown Pullman Distillery as a resource for our whiskeys. So when we introduced Whiff Reserve Distiller Select Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey in 1996, most people didn't realize that we had developed a new style of barrel for this product. Your typical bourbon barrel is charred. I mean, that's what the requirements are, a charred barrel. And our industry has gotten the toast effect as an after effect, as a consequence of charring. But because Brown Foreman was also producing wine barrels on the West Coast at the Mendocino Cooperage, we were making wine barrels. We are making wine barrels for major wine producers beyond the Brown Foreman experience. And we learned how certain toasting processes worked and were recommended by companies such as Gallo. So we put that work, that knowledge to use at the Brown Foreman Cooperage and the Whiffer Reserve Barrel was the first whiskey barrel in the history of whiskey barrels to be purposely toasted prior to charring. Knowing that we would give up some of the toast with the charring process, we have a deep set toast. So it was an absolutely unique barrel. It's a 10 minute toast, a 25 second char. To create the double oak barrel, we virtually reversed the parameters. A 40 minute toast, four times longer than the Woodford barrel, and a five second char, the flash char, one fifth the time. Because the second barrel was to be used not as the original maturation vehicle, because this is a finished whiskey. And I haven't seen, this is a hint, anyone really writing about this concept. <laughs> <laughs> that, On it. <laughs> it just it just escapes I just escaped people's I think understanding that this is a finished whiskey. It's Wood Reserve finished in a second barrel. And up to this point, 
every whiskey that I'm aware of, Scotch, Irish, you name the source, has been finished in a used barrel. A barrel that someone else used before. And it could have been port or sherry or rum. We've done that. We've certainly done that with our four wood. We've done that with our maple wood finish. We've done that with our Chardonnay and our Pinot Noir finish. It's very common. If anybody, if we can do it, anybody can do it. But what no one has done before is to make a finished barrel uniquely and specifically for a product. So the double oak barrel was designed to finish Wood Reserve exclusively in. It's a unique barrel. So this is the only whiskey in the world that I'm aware of that is matured and finished in two barrels made specifically for it. No one's ever done that before. And I'm, I'm not aware of anyone's doing it since. Um, the original barrel was made for us. What is, what is uh, toasted for Michter's? Is, is that, is that a... It's a rip off of us. <laughs> <laughs> But did they make the original barrel? Uh, no. Nope. Did the distillery make it? Did they make it? Did their cooperage make they, it? They don't get, disclose a lot of information. On this, yeah. So. Well, right. Yes. So, thank you for confirming. Were <laughs> the original? That makes sense. So. Yeah. <laughs> so very special whiskey, and the International Wine and Spirits Register also um, talks about. Are standing so Wood Reserve Double Oaked is the number one selling ultra premium Kentucky bourbon in the world. Kentucky bourbon specifically, this is number one super premium American whiskey of any type, which is brilliant. So we're not the number one selling ultra premium American whiskey because that honor belongs to the Jack Daniel's single barrel brand, which is far larger than this. So those are our two bourbon expressions. Let's pass around the Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Rye. And so there are a lot of ryes on the market right now, and um, rye whiskey has been making a really strong resurgence over the past few years. And um, I'll just start with our grain recipe because it's distinctly different from a lot of the rye grain recipes you see out right now. Um, so we are 53% rye, 33% corn, and 14% malted barley. Uh, the 14% malted barley is really important because um, it gives us the natural enzymes we need to convert all those starches to sugar. Uh, rye grain is a very difficult grain to break down, and so you need to have enough enzyme to really get it to work. Um, and that's important because if you look at a lot of what you see on the shelves, it's 100% rye or 95% rye. Um, and so how are they doing that? having to use some other sort of assistance um, with that process. So we're, we're very proud that we're making a product that is very much in the style that they were making pre-prohibition. Uh, we actually, this is the old watermill rye recipe um, that Brown Foreman produced many years ago. And um, so it really is like tasting a piece of history um, with modern technology kind of mingled with it to give it the great processing it needed. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you think of the kind of grand spectrum of ryes, you had the Maryland rye that was a little higher in the rye content, and then when you spread westward, you had your western rye that had lower rye content and then kicked up the corn because corn grows really well in the south, which then birthed the, the bourbon um, that you, you know today. So um, let's give this one a taste. And what I love about this too is that there's a lot of complexity to it. So it's not just one layer of flavor. You're going to get um, what, what Woodford Reserve always promises to deliver is that you get a lot of flavor going on. There's complexity with every um, type that we bring out. So not only do you get that it's spicy, when you nose it, you can see that difference. But then you, so you see bakery spices, you see pepper, you see rye grain, but then you'll see tea character, lemon, honey, so great sweetness, you see dried fruit as well. So there's a lot going on in this glass, so much to offer and to bring to, to having it. Think about it, they didn't make cocktails back, you know, really pre-COVID, I mean, they didn't have that kind of thing. Ice was still not even guaranteed. <laughs> um, so you had to be able to enjoy it just as is. Um, and this is one that can be enjoyed as is, or you can dress it up and it still tastes superb. So, cheers. 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 90.4 proof again. Everything is identical to the Whip Reserve bourbon. The fermentation, distillation, maturation, water, 
everything we talked about with our bourbon, the same three grains that uh, Elizabeth just ran through are the same three grains we use in the bourbon. We've just altered the ratio, making for a spicier style of Kentucky whiskey, happens to be rye whiskey. And, um, but it has that complexity of Woodford from the toasted barrel, from our long fermentation. Again, it shows that a subtle change can have a significant impact on the final flavor profile. And what we have done with this brand, I think, is bring balance to the industry, to the rye whiskey industry. When you think about that, you have tequila from the white Blanco tequilas to the extra añejos. You have the lightest of malt whiskeys, Scotch malts, to the the lo the Froigs and Lagavulins, the Isla whiskeys. You have white rum to heavily aged 24 year old rum. Even bourbon from the light bourbons to the from Basil Hayden to Double Oak. You have this wide spectrum, this flavor range. And then when you got to American Rye, most of it's parked at the far end of the 95 and 100%. Where is the balance? Woodford Reserve is bringing the balance back to the rye whiskey industry. We're going to the other end, the more approachable. Drink it neat, as Elizabeth said. Drink it on the rocks. We're bringing options to bartenders, options to drinkers. It doesn't have to be too spicy. It can be balanced. So we're really proud that we're helping Bring that back. Brown Foreman's already also begun to do that with our new Jack Daniels rye, which is 70% rye. So we're starting to swing the flavor pendulum back. And when Brown Foreman is done, we will have brought, I, I sound like a Jedi, balance to the <laughs> <laughs> The force is with us. And we're, and we're doing, yes. Chris, where's the, where's the rye? Uh, I know it tried Kentucky rye in a, in a few releases. Or yes. any, any luck with Kentucky Rye lately? Well, we are working with the University of Kentucky. We're working with the, the, uh, the state of Kentucky, the agricultural uh, department, um, and growing rye in Kentucky, growing barley in Kentucky. Uh, one of Elizabeth's projects is we're growing some, we'll be growing some cool corn, more on that later, in Kentucky. Um, you want to see her on a tractor in her Draper James dress? You're not going to see that. <laughs> Maybe. Why not? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe. But, uh, yes, we, we are pursuing the return of classic crops. But as you all know, our ancestors, even the early bourbons, even before bourbon was used, our ancestors did grow rye, they did grow barley, they grew more than corn in the commonwealth before we were the commonwealth because guess what? They didn't know any better. That's what you did. And as modern agriculture pro uh, product, uh, practices come in the late 19th, early 20th century, we now learn that rye doesn't grow very well here if you want to be efficient and have a great yield. It needs to grow in a cooler climate. I mean, our ancestors would have rolled over in their graves as they knew you could grow soybeans in Kentucky. Who would have thought? So agriculture has changed to be productive and efficient. So we're going to see if we can be efficient and productive with new strains of rye, with new crop um, um, uh, management processes to bring those back to Kentucky. So where does our rye come from, Fred? Our rye will come on an annual basis from different sources. It seems to be a very fickle crop and a fickle supply. Corn, we know where corn comes from. It comes from right here. We're very, we're very good with that. But our rye will come from the U.S. It could come from Canada. It could come from Denmark. It could come from Germany. It varies from year to year depending on the global supply. And Brown Foreman and Woof Reserve simply wants to get the best rye crop. So I can never tell you exactly where it comes from because it does vary from season to season. The barley does come from the United States. Uh, it does come from the North Pacific Northwest, and it comes through malt houses via Milwaukee. But the rye is the the changer. It, it's never quite consistent. Why is it? Is it fickle because of the weather, or fickle because of how much is planted, or price? Uh, more the the former, um, weather and um, how much is planted. Uh, the worst thing that ever happened to the rye whiskey, uh, excuse me, the rye uh, cultivation was corn. The, the ethanol boom, the conversion of corn into, into energy has 
done a damage to those crops. It, all, it was wiping out the agave. Agave uh, planters in Mexico were converting to corn. So again, you see these pendulums of demand and supply change from year to year. So, yeah, here, let's make rye whiskey from something that's hard to get. But that's what we do. <laughs> and the day at the races is our beautiful new with reserve distiller select Kentucky straight malt whiskey, and that handsome, and it's not a UK bottle, but that handsome blue bottle. Um, again, it's the same barrel as our bourbon, same barrel as our rye. Everything, everything is the same as our bourbon and rye, even the same three grains. This is malted barley, rye, and corn. This is a three grain recipe. This is again bringing back the 19th century. Most people don't realize that Americans Kentuckians were making malt whiskeys before Prohibition. Not a lot of them, but there were malt whiskeys being made right here in Louisville. Wasn't a big deal. We made rye here in Louisville. We made other types of whiskey. But it seems like Prohibition cleansed our consciousness of all these different whiskeys, certainly cleansed the production of these whiskeys become, coming out of Prohibition. Our ancestors, if they were in Kentucky, they returned to making bourbon. If they were on the East Coast, they returned to making rye whiskey. And everybody stopped making the old style whiskeys they were making because that was just the practical thing to do. In 1935, we see the first regulations coming out of the federal government. And what do we see being approved? Four straight whiskeys. Straight bourbon, straight rye, straight wheat, and straight malt. So from very early on, these were authorized styles of whiskey. But again, no one evidently was making them until recent times. Straight, as you all know, means aged a minimum of two years in a new charred barrel. Malt was not defined other than minimum of 51% malt in the recipe. This is not a single malt. This is not a 100% malt. This is a return to the old-fashioned Kentucky straight malt whiskey, just as our ancestors would have produced prior to Prohibition. This is 51% malt, 47% corn, and 2% rye. So it's sweet. It's soft a little little hint of spice. Mm -hmm. Tell us all about it. Okay, so this is really fun because erase your, as Chris was saying, erase your concept of what a malt whiskey is and change it to what Woodford Reserve malt is because this is now going to be the leader in the category. Um, when you nose this, so you'll see with the, with the malt being forward and corn and then just a teeny tiny bit of rye, just enough to kind of feed our yeast essentially. Um, it's going to be sweet aromatics and then some of your fruit character and of course grain notes coming through. So nose it and you'll get pecan and then you get a little brown sugar and vanilla. There's a little bit of that tea note coming through. The malt to me really always kind of presents itself in that way. Or you think about um, almonds character, so you've got that cherry note too. Yeah. Now go ahead and taste. 90.4 again. It's almost chocolatey. Like it gives you that chocolatiness. It's got that spice comes through on the palate from the, from the barrel. So cinnamon, clove, a um, little slight cedar wood in there. So it's very, very easy to drink and totally different. It doesn't have, sometimes when I taste a lot of the, uh, like a scotch, um, and not an unpeated one, it's more of the fruit forward, um, more of, um, apple y character, uh, apple sauce, whatever. And then this is more on the, it gives you some of the more of the pecan notes, the nuttiness of the grain that comes through. So easy to drink and very complex, there's layers upon layer of flavor. So I'm very excited to see what people think of this, what they do with it, what bartenders do with it. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in that space, so uh, we're really, really excited about this one. So this is not to be compared to a, a single malt Scotch, a single malt Irish, single malt Japanese, single malt single Tasmanian, <laughs> single malt Swedish. Well, or even an American. Or single a single malt, malt of any type. Yeah, I mean any type. This is a Kentucky straight malt whiskey. It's different. And 
while there have been some small amounts of 100% malt made in Kentucky in the last few years, obviously we had our 100% malted barley expressions of the Masters collection. This is the first of its kind since before Prohibition, the first Kentucky straight malt. And like our rye, like our bourbons, it's very versatile. You can make a Wood Reserve malt Manhattan. It's excellent. A malt old fashioned. A malt mint julep. Pretty darn good. <laughs> yes. You got to make sure you get the right ratios of sweetener and, and uh, mint. But this is versatile. This family can be enjoyed neat on the rocks and then in the classic cocktails. So that's what we're looking forward to next to see the experimentation of bartenders and consumers and making great cocktails and drinks out of this new Kentucky Straight Malt from Woodford Reserve and just enjoying it neat. Having it on the drink menus, having it on the back bars. Again, there will not be a whole lot of it. It'll be in about the same ratio of our rye. We're going to always make sure that we take care of Kentucky. Kentucky, the Kentucky consumer has been so good to us. We're going to continue to support them. Um, we don't, we won't allocate only here, only there. Um, it, this will be nationally distributed, but again, we always make sure we take care of the Kentucky market, the home market, first of all. So, as Chris said, we expect this to start shipping to retail in June. And on the market. Mm -hmm.